Hello students! Welcome back to our science video. For today's topic, we will discuss an organic chemical compound composed exclusively of hydrogen and carbon atoms, which is known as the hydrocarbons. At the end of this video, learners are expected to explain how the structure of the carbon atom affects the type of bonds it forms, recognize the general classes and uses of organic compounds. What are the different key properties of carbon? First, it has a mid-range electronegativity value, so it forms covalent bonds and shares electrons. Second, it can form a maximum of four bonds. Third, it can form chains, sheets, and rings. And lastly, it is usually combined with hydrogen and often bonds with oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, and phosphorus. These are the different allotropes or structure of a carbon compound. It can be in a form of diamond, graphite, graphene, and fullerene. The main difference between an organic compound to an inorganic compound is that organic compound has a carbon-hydrogen bonds while inorganic compound may have carbon or hydrogen bonds but neither at the same time. What is hydrocarbon? Each carbon can form a maximum of four single bonds, or two single and one double bond, or one single and triple bond. The arrangement of carbon atoms determines the skeleton, so a straight chain and a bent chain represent the same skeleton. Groups joined by single bonds can rotate, so a branch pointing down is the same as one pointing up. Looking at the illustration, it shows that different position of carbon will still have the same orientation or carbon number. The following are the different kinds of hydrocarbons. Alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and the aromatics or arenes. This table shows the main differences between the three main types of hydrocarbons. Saturated hydrocarbons contain only carbon-to-carbon -carbon single bonds, while unsaturated hydrocarbons contain carbon-to-carbon -carbon double or triple bonds, wherein more hydrogens can be added. In the carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond, two pairs of electrons are being shared, leaving the carbon free to bond to two other atoms. Example of a saturated hydrocarbon is the alkanes, while alkenes and alkynes are both unsaturated due to the presence of double and triple bonds. The first type of hydrocarbon is the alkanes. Alkanes is also known as paraffins. Hydrocarbons in which all the bonds are single have molecular formulas that satisfy the general expression CnH2n plus 2, where n is an integer. So what are the different physical properties of alkanes? First, alkanes are colorless. Second, Alkanes are less dense than water, meaning alkanes float on top of water. Third, alkanes are nonpolar molecules, so they are more soluble in nonpolar solvents than they are in polar solvents. Alkanes are insoluble in water. And lastly, the melting and boiling points of the shorter chain alkanes is low, but the melting and boiling point of alkanes increases as the number of carbon atoms increases as well. These are the first 10 straight chain alkanes. Probably the most important use of alkanes is as fuel. Methane and ethane are natural gas that are considered to be cleaner fuels since they produce less carbon dioxide during combustion. In the Philippines, the Malampaya Deep Water Gas to Power Project in Palawan is one of the major sources of natural gas. It generates 40% of Luzon's electricity requirement. Propane and butane are also gaseous hydrocarbons that are major components of liquefied petroleum gas or LPG, while octane is an 8-carbon alkane and is major component of petroleum. The second type of hydrocarbon is the alkenes. Alkenes is also known as olefins, hydrocarbons containing one or more double bonds. It has a general formula of CnH2n, where n is an integer. The different physical properties of alkenes includes melting and boiling points, density, solubility in water, and electrical conductivity. The melting and boiling points of the alkenes increase with increasing number of carbon atoms per molecule. 
densities of the alkenes increase with increasing number of carbon atoms per molecule. Alkenes do not dissolve in water but are soluble in organic solvents. Alkenes cannot conduct electricity because alkenes consist of neutral molecules. It does not have mobile ions or electrons to conduct electricity. This table shows the specific value of physical properties of the first nine straight chain of alkenes. The third type of hydrocarbon is the alkynes. Alkynes is also known as acetylenes. Hydrocarbons containing one or more triple bonds. It has a general formula of CnH2n-2, where n is an integer. The properties of alkynes pretty much follow the same pattern of those of alkanes and alkenes. Alkynes are unsaturated carbon that shares a triple bond at the carbon site. This table shows the specific value of physical properties of the first nine straight chain of alkynes. The last kind of hydrocarbon is the aromatic. Aromatic compounds originally named because of their fragrant properties are unsaturated hydrocarbon ring structures that exhibit special properties, including unusual stability due to their aromaticity. They are often represented as resonant structures containing single and double bonds. So what are the different aromatic hydrocarbons? First is benzene. It is a good solvent for fats and paint but is toxic. Second is naphthalene, a component of mothballs. And lastly, we have anthracene. It is used in making color designs in fabrics. How do we write or draw the structural formulas of organic compounds? Structural formula is a graphical representation of a molecule showing the arrangement of the different atoms and how they are bonded to each other. We can write the structural formula of any organic molecule by taking into consideration the octet rule. Octet rule states that atoms tend to form compounds in ways that give them 8 valence electrons and thus the electron configuration of a noble gas. The following guidelines may be followed in writing the structural formula of organic compounds. Carbon can only accommodate four bonds. For example, if all bonds to carbon are single bonds, then one should draw four single lines around carbon to designate the bonds which are available to link with carbon or other selected elements. Following the octet rule, a carbon with multiple bonds can form links with other groups as the remaining bonds will allow. A carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond allows for only two groups to be bonded to each carbon involved in the formation of double bond, while a carbon-to-carbon -carbon triple bond allows for only one group to be bonded to each of the carbons in the triple bond. In our sample structure number 1, propane is a hydrocarbon which has three atoms linked by a single bond. Write the appropriate number of hydrogen atoms to each carbon to come up with the correct structural formula. Let us first label the carbon starting from the rightmost as carbon number 1, carbon number 2, and carbon number 3, respectively. Carbon number 1 is already linked to carbon number 2 through single bond, and following the octet rule, it can accommodate 3 more single bonds. Thus, carbon number 1 can bond with 3 hydrogen atoms. On the other hand, carbon number 2 is bonded to carbon number 1 and carbon number 3. Thus, carbon number 2 can only accommodate two hydrogen atoms, while carbon number 3, just like carbon number 1, can accommodate three atoms of hydrogen. In our sample structure number 2, propene is another hydrocarbon which has one double bond. In propene, carbon number 1 is linked to carbon number 2 by a double bond. Thus, carbon number 1 can only accommodate two hydrogens. Carbon number 2 is linked to carbon number 1 by a double bond, and carbon number 3 by a single bond. Following the octet rule, carbon number 2 can only accommodate one hydrogen, while carbon number 3 can accommodate three hydrogen atoms. The structural formula of a compound can further simplify through its condensed and line angle structural formula. A condensed and line angle structural formula still shows the arrangement of the different atoms in the molecule and how they are bonded to each other. 
However, for hydrocarbons, the arrangement of the carbon atoms are still shown in their condensed structural formula, but carbon to hydrogen bonds are not shown anymore. These are examples of the different structural formula of a hydrocarbon but still has the same nomenclature. Aside from drawing the structural formula of an organic compound, we should also know how to name hydrocarbons. In 1982, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, or IUPAC, came up with a systematic way of naming organic compounds. It is known as the IUPAC system of nomenclature. The systematic names of organic compounds consist of three main parts, prefix, stem, and suffix. In this system, the stem of an organic compound depends on the number of carbon atoms in the parent chain. The parent chain is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. Based on our example, the 5-carbon chain in yellow is the longest continuous chain in this molecule. Thus, it is called the parent chain. The parent chain has two smaller groups of molecules attached to it. These groups are called side chains, or the alkyls. They have fewer number of carbon atoms composed to the parent chain. Alkyl groups are named by replacing the suffix ANE with YL. It has a general formula of CNH2N plus 1. For example, a side chain with one carbon is named methyl, while that with two carbons is ethyl. The side chain in our previous example is a methyl since it has only one carbon. This is the alkyl group including their name and molecular formula. As you can see, we just subtract one hydrogen in the formula of alkane to form alkyl. These are the prefixes used in indicating the length of the carbon chain based on the IUPAC nomenclature system. We have met, et, prop, but, pent, hex, hep, oc, non, and dec. The rules used to arrive at these names are as follows. The base or parent name is determined by the longest chain of carbon atoms in the formula. The longest chain may bend and twist, it is seldom horizontal. Any carbon groups not part of the base chain are called branches or substituents. These carbon groups are also called the alkyl groups. Applying rule number 1, we need to find the longest chain or the parent chain in each molecule. The longest continuous chain of carbon is in red line. Sample A has 7 carbon, while sample B has 8. We also need to add the following suffixes to the stem of the name. If there's only a single bond present in your parent chain, we need to add A and E for alkanes. If there is a double bond in your parent chain, we need to add E and E for alkenes. If there is a triple bond in your parent chain, we need to add Y and E for alkynes. The parent chains in our example is an alkane and has 7 and 8 carbons. Thus, its stems and suffixes name are heptane and octane. The third rule is to number the carbon atoms in the parent chain. Beginning with the end of the chain that is nearest to a side chain, a double bond or triple bond. If both branches are equally from the ends, continue until a point of difference occurs. Let's number the carbon atoms correctly. Rule number 4, write each of the branches or substituents in alphabetical order before the base or stem name, which is also known the longest chain. Halogens usually comes first, bromo, chloro, fluoro, and iodo. Indicate the position of the branch on the main chain by prefixing its name with the carbon number to which it is attached. Separate numbers and letters with a hyphen and separate two or more numbers with commas. The parent chain is a 6-carbon alkane group named as hexane. Along the parent chain, there are two alkyl groups attached to carbon number 2 and carbon number 4. In carbon number 2, there is a methyl while in carbon number 4, there is ethyl. Therefore, the name of the structure is 4-ethyl-2-methylhexane, following the rules given on the previous slides. When a branch or substituent occurs more than once, prefix the name with di, tri, and tetra. 
then list the number of the carbon branch for that substituent to the name with a separate number for each occurrence. Separate numbers with commas. For example, 3 for dimethyl or 4 for 6 triethyl. The parent chain is a 7 carbon alkane group named as heptane. Along the parent chain, there are 3 alkyl groups attached to carbon number 2, 3, and 5. In carbon number 2 and 3, there is methyl, while in carbon number 5, there is ethyl. Therefore, the name of the structure is 5-ethyl-2,3-dimethylheptane. Take note that we need to follow alphabetical orders in writing the alkyl group. Halogenation is a type of substitution reaction, a reaction that results in a replacement of one group for another. Products of this reaction are alkyl halide or haloalkane and hydrogen halide. This reaction is important in converting unreactive alkanes into many starting materials for other products. Halogenation of alkanes only occurs in the presence of heat and light. These are the three different positions of halogens within the chain of carbon. It can be a primary alkyl halide, a secondary alkyl halide, or a tertiary alkyl halide. Primary halide, the compound in which the halide ion is attached to a primary carbon. Secondary halide, the compound in which the halide ion is attached to a secondary carbon. And lastly, the tertiary halide, the compound in which the halide ion is attached to a tertiary carbon. In naming haloalkane, name is based on longest carbon chain, contains double or triple bond if present. Number the carbons of the parent chain beginning at the end nearer the first substituent, whether alkyl or halo. For example, 5 bromo 2 for dimethylheptane. On the other one, we have 2 bromo 4 5 dimethylheptane. If more than one of the same kind of halogen is present, use prefix di, tri, and tetra. If there are several different halogens, number them and list them in alphabetical order. In naming two halides or alkyl that are equally distant from ends of the chain, begin at the end nearer the substituent whose name comes first in the alphabet. For example, 2,3-dichloro for methylhexane. Chloro comes first before methyl. On the other example, it should be 2-bromo-5-methylhexane, not 5-bromo-2-methylhexane. In the line form, both number orders starts with carbon number 3. However, the first option is correct, since alkyls are located on carbon number 3 and 4, so it beats 3 and 5, even though it has halide in carbon number 3. Thank you for watching! Do not forget to subscribe for more science educational videos by clicking the notification bell below.